Okay, in this video, you're going to learn about Newton's law of cooling. It is extremely intuitive, so I want you to rely on your intuition. Different from other aspects of mathematics and physics, sometimes we don't have any intuition about magnetic fields or electricity. We don't have any intuition about that. But here, we interact with this and deal with this all the time, every day. Newton's law of cooling. All that it says is, that, let me show you the formula. The left-hand side says that change in temperature in time, and capital T is temperature and small t is time. I know, in this case, it's inconvenient that they share the first initial, but just keep that um, in mind that capital T is temperature, small t is time. So the rate of change of temperature with respect to time equals some proportionality constant K times the difference between ambient or surrounding temperature, like temperature in this room, and the object's temperature, okay? So all that means is that if you have a glass of water with ice in it, its rate of change of temperature will depend on the difference between surrounding ambient temperature and its temperature at that time. We get that. Like if I was in a room where thermostat was set at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, um, I wouldn't expect the ice to melt, right? But if I have a thermostat where it's at 70 degree Fahrenheit, then I know what happens. That happens every day to me. I put ice in my water, it disappears. The story of my life, right? So that's exactly what Newton's law of cooling is telling you. That's the formula, okay? So we're gonna use that formula to determine the time of death of a man based on a change in the temperature of a body. That is what forensics team does. It uses um, Newton's law of cooling to determine the time of death. Important thing here is that for our case in this video, we're going to go with an easier scenario. There are two possible scenarios where we can have surrounding temperature constant that can only happen inside of the house where we have thermostats and where we don't have thermostats is everywhere that is outside of the house. So in the natural world where temperature is allowed to change how temperature changes in the world, which is sinusoidally. So if you look in your weather app, you will see that the temperature changes sinusoidally. Okay. So there are two cases where ambient temperature is constant. It's always at 70 degree Fahrenheit or whatever it's set on. That can only happen inside of a house or surrounding temperature changes the way it does in the natural world, which is sinusoidally. In the next video, I'm going to solve Newton's law of cooling where temperature is changed. Is, we're outside. We're no longer inside. So that problem will be uh, mathematically trickier. The concept is the same, but this problem is going to be kind of like a step one, a simpler problem. Okay, so let's read the problem and try to solve it. Okay, man was killed in his house. The police forensic team arrived at the crime scene at 10 a.m. They immediately measure the scene's ambient temperature. That is what the thermostat reads. And we're gonna assume that's constant. And dead man's body core temperature at time equals zero, which is at 10 a.m. Exactly, that's where we're gonna set our time to be zero. That is 80 degree Fahrenheit. So that's the data that we collect as a forensic team, right? So we arrive at the crime scene, we see a dead man, we put a thermometer in his mouth immediately to take that reading. The second reading um, uh, we're gonna take is at time equal one, which will be 11 a.m., right? So that was 75 degree Fahrenheit. And we're gonna assume that man's core temperature when he was alive was 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And with this information, we will determine when he died, okay? So here we have Newton's law of cooling. This is the formula. Now you can take the minus sign out here and have this version of it. It just makes practical sense to do this just because in one step, two steps away, I will have to take the interval and it will so happen that this difference, this difference right here, will end up inside of the logarithm, right? So because I don't want to take logarithms of negative numbers, because I can't, 
I will make sure that this expression inside of the parentheses is positive. The way I will do that is by seeing if I'm dealing with cooling or heating up. So if I had heating up case, I would use this where the ambient temperature is more than the object temperature. That would happen with the ice, uh, icy water, right? The ambient temperature will be greater number than the icy water, right? This will be 70. This will be around I don't know, 32. So in this case, we have cooling down. Man is losing its temperature and surrounding temperature is 70. And at all times, men's temperature is higher than 70. So I want to subtract from men's temperature. So this expression is positive so that when I take integral and this will inevitably end up under inside of the log, everything is well. Uh, so that I'm not taking a logarithm of a negative number. Okay, at this point, since I've taken out the minus, now, I'm, now I have this case. I realize that this is a separable differential equation, meaning that with one simple step, I can move this over and time uh, to the right side, for you to decide, uh, and it is separated, meaning on one side, on left side, I have just temperatures, and on the right side, I have only time as a variable. That's what separate separable differential equation means, that you can have your food not touching all the one type of variables on one side of the equal sign and the uh, other type of variable on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, at this point, I realize that this is ln or log. I use logs uh, sometimes, but I really, it's the same thing as ln because I mean with the base e. So it's just the semantics. It's the same thing as ln. It's just mathematicians prefer log and uh, uh, engineers prefer ln. Here, this integral k is just a constant and it has to do with a particular man. And if you really want to get intuition for k, then a heavier set man will have a lower k, meaning that its rate of temperature change will be lower right? It will have a greater ability to resist loss of temperature. And if you had a really thin man, then uh, he would lose temperature quicker. Okay, that's the intuition for k. So k comes out of the integral because it's a constant. And then I end up with t plus a constant of integration c1. So all I have on the left side is these cancel. That's why I erased both of these expressions as powers of e. And on the right side, I have e to this uh, power. And I will separate that and write it as product of the same base e with these powers, right? This right here is a constant. e is just a number and c1 is also just a number. But there's a little caveat here. C1 is completely free. It can be negative number, it can be zero, it can be positive number. So let's see, C1 can be negative five. Then all I have here is e to the five. It's a small number, but it's never negative number, okay? So this whole thing is never gonna be negative. It can be a very small number, but not negative. So C right here, if I wanna redefine this, this is a constant and say that it's, all equals to another constant, I will have to specify that, by the way, this constant is kind of restricted to be only positive or zero number. And that's okay. And I will move on happily after I've specified that. So this is the temperature of a man as a function of time. So on this side, I have temperature of man. On this side, I only have time variable. This is ambient temperature. That's just a number, that's a constant. This is not a function, okay? This is a function of time. This is just 70 degrees in this video for this problem. Okay, now I will take advantage of the two uh, data points that I collected or we collected as a forensics team, right? So I need to find this, I know I was given this, this is 70, I read the reading on the thermostat, but K and C, there are two constants and I need to find values for that. So I need two uh, specific conditions. And at t equals zero, which is at 10 a.m. for us, the temperature of a man was 80. 
okay? And the time zero. So that's where I write down and I get my C value. And that is 10. I use that in my next step, okay? I will write 10 here instead of C. And this is ambient temperature 70. In, the, in this case, time equals one. And then the temperature of a man that we measured using thermometer was 75 degree Fahrenheit. Now I find K. So E raised to the negative K equals five over 10, one over two, okay? It's one half. I will stop here. You can continue and get K explicitly, but I will stop there because this is the equation that tells me the temperature of a man at any time. So I can write this, it's a product here. And remember that two M N equals two M N, right? So I will just write this as all raised to power T. And this E to negative K equals one over two. So instead of this, I will write one over two here. And then this is my equation. This is a specific equation to the specific man that we have in front of us that died. This is the specific K and all of that, right? So now the final step. How do we determine when did the man die? We want time. We don't have time. That's what we're trying to find. But we know one thing, that when he was alive, right before he died, he was alive. His temperature was 98 degree Fahrenheit, an average living person's temperature. So I'm going to put that here and solve for the independent variable, in this case, T, time. I will log both sides. I use ln in, uh, at this point. I first started with log, but because I will, uh, I understand that our calculators have lns, so I, I guess that's why I used ln here. Okay, so ln 2.8 uh, divided by ln 1 half, ln 1 half is a negative number because it's ln 1 minus ln 2. LNs of a logarithm of less than one uh, are negative. So I ended up with negative time, which is okay because all this is telling me is that, remember we took our time to be zero at 10 a.m.? This is telling me that the men died prior to police arriving, which police arrived at 10 a.m., which I would hope so, right? Uh, and remember that one and a half hours, that is 90 minutes. So subtract 90 minutes or 89 minutes to be precise from 10 a.m. And that is 8.31 a.m. And that is when the men must have died, okay? That is a solved problem. But this is how you determine time of death using Newton's law of cooling, okay? Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.